Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Wood of the Kick Guru. This is Leo Says, my occasional opinion piece, number 31, would you believe? Ian Cutress of Anantech, and there is no finer start to a sentence, tells us that Intel's going to be holding an architecture summit stroke event on 11th of December, presumably in California. Uh, and the fact is that that event needs to be good news for Intel. Now, this is not IDF. IDF is dead, and IDF used to be a really big event. This will apparently be a very small and exclusive event. So I've got visions of Ian sat there on a seat tweeting away like crazy, along with a tiny handful of other chip journos. Why do I say it needs to be good news? On the 5th of November, Intel announced Cascade Lake SP and Cascade Lake AP. I wasn't expecting to hear about Cascade Lake. I was expecting to hear about Cooper Lake. Now, it so happens that Cascade is a six-letter word starting with C, and Cooper is also a six-letter word starting with C. So I can actually write C X X X X X dash lake, and I could be talking about either chip. It's quite, well, humorous to me, uh, because Intel's roadmap said a little while ago that Cooper Lake was due in 2018, Cascade Lake in 2019, and we appear to be moving on now to be talking about next year, the good stuff that is to come. And we know this is what people do and companies do when the present is all murky and horrible, but we've got maybe, possibly, some good news on the horizon, or maybe not. And you just ignore the current and you move on to the future. You say, yeah, yeah, yeah it's all rubbish now, but we've got some really good stuff coming. Well, that, to my eyes, is what Cascade Lake is all about. Once again, the thing here is that Intel's stuck on 14 nanometer, 14 nanometer plus plus, possibly an extra plus, maybe even an extra plus, and is nowhere near 10 nanometer. So whatever it does with Cascade Lake, uh, SP and AP, the AP standing for advanced performance, the fabrication process is not going to get them out of trouble. It's not going to advance them. It's uh, a question of what can they do with architecture? What can they change to make the chip better? And <laughs> the answer would appear to be not only nothing or very little, but something specifically that they are rubbishing AMD for but a year ago. What they appear to have done is to taken Perly, which uh, came out as uh, Skylake SP. Now that's the uh, Xeons that you get in three forms. You get the low core count, high core count, and extreme core count goes up to 28 cores max. And you take one of those chips, and you take another of those chips, and you, to use Intel's own words, glue them together, and you put them on presumably a brand new socket, which must surely just be vast in size, although in fairness, AMD Threadripper Epic is also fairly huge, and you call that a new chip. So what we have here is Skylake SP can go uh, up to 28 cores, it's 698 millimeters squared, 205 watt TDP, 14 nanometer. And we were expecting versions of this going forward that would be revised and made better. And what we apparently have, because Intel's kind of coming out with some choice little tidbits, but isn't really giving us any solid detail, we appear to have with Cascade Lake AP for advanced performance up to 48 cores per socket and 12 channels of DDR4 memory support. Uh, so basically, it is just two chips working together. The fact it's up to 48 cores and not 56 cores uh, suggests that they're using that die space for something else, perhaps for interconnect, because this is going to be a dual socket layout. So in practice, it's going to be two double chips, uh, two sockets on a monster board, uh, which effectively is four processors. It's just that two package there, two package there. And how they interconnect them, are they going to be in a square stroke or ring, or are they going to have an X going on? That remains to be seen, as do many other parts of the uh, specification. And you have to think, therefore, that's going to be a, a socket that's, you know, 5,000 or whatever contacts. It's going to be a big one. So uh, the maths is quite straightforward. Instead of 56 cores, 48 cores, uh, you double the 698 millimeters squared. And then what happens with power? Well, that's a thing. I mean, is the TDP 350 watts? It's obviously going to be a lot. Clearly, if it's anything approaching 350 watts, you're talking liquid cooling or something of that ilk. <laughs> Intel has also said that this new in inverted commas CPU is going to support a persistent memory Optane uh, crosspoint, uh, which 
personally I, I struggle to be particularly interested in because this has now been promised for so long that when it eventually arrives uh, it's going to be well unless it does something just totally amazing it's like well you've delivered it well done and uh, even now there are problems apparently with durability it's one thing if you've got solid state memory durability can be relatively limited say to 3000 cycles when it's working as memory that's not good enough uh, it really isn't so let's just say that it supports this uh, persistent memory hopefully that's going to work wonderfully and we'll, we'll just put that to one side the significant thing about the 5th of november is this is the day before amd held an event uh, where they were showing off their new rome epic epic uh, rome is not yet here but it's been announced it was announced at computex and, and it's been out for qualification for uh, some few months so uh, rome is around uh, and i have to assume intel knows something about rome i'd be amazed if they didn't even though it'd be unofficial taking the current epic the 7601 32 core and using their 48 core processor they disabled hyperthreading on their own processor they disabled smt on the amd processor uh, so it's 48 cores against 32 cores and surprisingly benchmarks according to intel intel one but this on the face of it is uh, questionable at the best of times in this particular instance it's highly questionable so first off 48 cores against 32 cores of course they get a victory they bloom you should do the fact they've chosen now to do it knowing full well that uh, amd's next processor doubles or up to doubles the core count it's 48 or 64 cores uh, means in a sense what they're doing against the current 32 core is kind of irrelevant uh, there's that but the business about threads is highly significant and the reason is that uh, hyperthreading for Intel appears to be a vector of attack for uh, Spectre Meltdown. But uh, there's, there's recently been uh, an announcement about another attack called Port Smash, which I keep reading as Port Smash, but Port Smash it is. And that relies on hyperthreading. Disable hyperthreading, that threat goes away. So there is currently a question mark over whether Intel is going to continue using hyperthreading in the future. So instead of 48 core 96 thread, it'll be 48 core 48 thread, potentially. That being the case, Intel has not actually disabled hyperthreading on this processor, this 48 core processor or double chip. Uh, they've actually used it as it's going to be uh, provided or, or put on sale. In which case, if that is how it is, 48 core 48 thread, it would uh, have been correct to have tested against an AMD 32 core 64 thread epic today and then very soon a 48 core 96 thread or indeed 64 core 128 thread and that would have been a very interesting battle. Intel is testing with hyperthreading and SMT disabled but we're not the least bit clear whether hyperthreading will ever be enabled. That being the case, that makes that test highly questionable. Now, if Intel comes out and said, of course, it will have hyperthreading, we just haven't got it going at the moment for some unspecified reason. Uh, and what might that reason be? Uh, well, it shouldn't be a technical reason. So it could be a security thing. Now, for servers and such, like if they decide to disable hyperthreading, OK. You also have to wonder if it's to save power. Disabling hyperthreading, halving the threads, that has to take a chunk off the power. Quite clearly, this monster chip is going to you know, want to save power wherever it can. Disabling hyperthreading uh, a year or two ago would have sounded absolutely bonkers. Now it sounds like a perfectly reasonable strategy, in which case disabling uh, SMT on the Epic 7601, that doesn't sound good. Also, uh, this is something I was reading over on uh, Semi Accurate. Charlie was uh, writing that... Uh, some of the software that uh, Intel was using, and you have to question their compilers at all stages because uh, all companies have a bit of history here, but Intel has uh, previously used uh, compilers that hurt AMD. Uh, supposedly some of the software uh, needs to be written to take advantage of persistent memory. Uh, so it's not a level playing field if you're using a processor with Optane. Uh, are you using carefully written software that takes best advantage of that hardware? If so, how much software exactly is going to take advantage of persistent memory? You know, who's going to go out there and write for that storage? My summary here is that Intel has announced what sounds like some very interesting processors available next year on entirely by chance the day before AMD does its stuff at the 5th of November. And really, there was a resounding silence. Uh, because they're given so little information, you know, including things like prices, but uh, 
technically there's so little information you really don't know what to make of what they've said however they've done the press release they've done the presentation the information is out there and then we come to AMD now by any standard on the 6th of November at uh, AMD's next horizon event I think the first of those was last year so this is the second next horizon event Dr. Lisa Sue of AMD looked like a very happy lady, and quite correctly, and presu presuming that she's got a decent number of share options at AMD, also a very wealthy lady, and deservedly so. So, the story was Rome, uh, the 7 nanometer Zen 2 server chip. Now, the thing was that uh, Lisa Sue was showing off Rome, or talking about Rome, at uh, Computex of this year, so that's four, five months ago now. And we, we saw the processor and it looks like the existing Epic. It's a great big slab of a thing. This time around we got to see under the heat spreader. And we heard various little bits and pieces of news. So for example, the 7 nanometer processor apparently doesn't deliver the sort of step up in performance that you might hope over 14 nanometer. You're talking 25% increase. That's obviously welcome. But uh, considering the enormous leap to 7 nanometer, not quite what you might expect. They also said that... Uh, it was a partnership with TSMC and EDA to deliver 7 nanometer. It's not just a question of going to your fab saying, go on, make that. Then you've got to have the design tools to deliver the new chips. Uh, there was also uh, talk about second generation Infinity Fabric, which is the interconnect that AMD has used to make the whole Zen thing possible. These, frankly, are just details. Bigger news to my mind was confirmation that Rome is backwards compatible with Naples, which is the first gen of Epic, and forward compatible with Milan, which is going to be the third generation. So we currently have the first gen uh, Epic in 2019, and by the sound of it, very soon we're going to have Zen 2, which will be Rome on 7 nanometer, and then there'll be a, a revision thereof, but on the same process, or more or less the same process, we'll have uh, Zen 3 in Milan. As to exactly what uh, the change from Zen to Zen 2, on the desktop we are on second gen Ryzen, but that's still Zen. It's a die shrink. They've changed the algorithm to do with uh, power and boost and such like, but it's the same architecture. The architecture for Zen 2, uh, it, it comes down to how they structured the chips rather than moving bits around inside chips. It's radical stuff. There are eight 7 nanometer chips or chiplets arranged around an enormous 14 nanometer IOX chip, and the IOX chip handles. IO, DDR4 and frontside bus. So the memory controller has moved out of the chiplets and into the IOX, uh, which is obviously very similar to the days of moving it back to the chipset. Uh, but the architecture and the layout is very different to uh, recent uh, CPUs. Now, this frankly would have been um, more of a revelation if we hadn't actually seen leaks of this. And uh, Charlie is semi-accurate is claiming that he knew about this a long time ago, but Jim of Adored TV ran videos of this a couple of months back. He got some leaks from who knows whom, and those leaks appear to be in absolute gold. And now he can sit there and go, yup, got that completely 100% correct. And he did. Uh, when he went with those leaks, frankly, I think that was a very big move on his part because he could have looked a complete muppet, uh, instead of which total vindication. So fair play there. Uh, so in a sense, you could uh, you could ask why was Lisa Su on stage? Why was there even an event? Because it really was confirmation of stuff that had already been in, uh, was out there in the wild. These chips are in uh, qualification. They're not yet on sale. What's the point? Uh, which is a fair question. I don't actually have an answer to that, although there were some various uh, announcements, such as uh, Amazon Web Services uh, are now uh, offering uh, Rome and such like now or very shortly anyway they're in partnership with amd that's the big news uh, amd has partners galore they've had first gen epic to uh, get comfortable with second gen epic quite clearly is tickling their fancy and fair play to amd for that they are taking the fight to intel big time uh, so the layout of uh, zen 2 in uh, in rome is radically different to processes that we've seen in recent times how that's going to transfer across or translate across the desktop, I'm not the least bit clear. Are we going to see uh, uh, IOX chips on the desktop and then two dies or chiplets uh, rather than eight? I'm not really sure there's any particular need for it. Uh, on the other hand, with Threadripper, you can absolutely see an IOX sitting there and then four chiplets in, uh, in the corners of the uh, processor. That makes perfect sense. I strongly hope we see that with Threadripper 3000 during 2019. In fact, I'd be stunned if we didn't. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, hey-ho, you know what to do. If you can find the bell button, hit that. We'll let you know about new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Water for Kick Guru. 
This was Leo Says. Thank you.